Marie-Lou. Ici, dans la maison. Non, Père Marie, pas de ici. Ah, nous ferons bien, hein? Bien, petit moustique. Non, Père Marie, non, 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 non,
in peacetime, the uh, boat from America comes once a month. And the ladies, the wives of the planters, they often go to Australia during other months. It can get very hot here. Oh, it can get hot in Little Rock, too. It can? Uh-huh. <coughs> I have many books here. Austin Proust, Audrey Jean. Uh, did you study French at school? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, then you can read French. No, I can hunt you a few birds. Uh, I bet you read a lot. Uh, out here, one becomes hungry to learn everything, not to miss anything, not to let anything good pass by. One waits so long for what is good, and when at last it comes, one cannot risk to lose it. So one must speak and act quickly, even, even if it seems almost foolish to be so quick. I know it is only two weeks. Lipstick. Three lumps of sugar in this little 
Okay, Schwetzel, what am I offering? Hold on that. Hold on. Gee, that's mighty nice work. You hear that? You can sell these to the chumps for five, maybe six dollars a piece. I could let you have the whole bunch for, say, 80 bucks. That's a make a quick deal. Hmm? I give you ten dollars. Ten dollars? No, I don't. Damn right, not enough. Damn well, keep them. Now, you see here, dragon lady, you gave me a... What's that you got there? A boy's tooth bracelet? Where do you get that? Over there on Valley High. You like? You know what that is? It's a bracelet made from a single boar's tooth. They cut the tooth from the boar's mouth in a big ceremonial over there on Valley High. Right, a souvenir you can pick up in the whole South Pacific as valuable as that. What do you want for it, Mary? Hundred dollars? A hundred dollars? That's cheap, I thought it could be more. We'll see how they can turn it out for that. I make you a special offer, big dealer. I trade you a boss teeth bracelet for all the grass skirts. It's a deal. Wait a minute. It's no deal till you throw in something for good luck. Okay, what do you want me to throw in? Under Dara! Oh, well, look. You don't run into these things every day. They're as scarce as hen's teeth. Bigger, too. <laughs> That darn valley high. Why does it have to be out of bounds? You get everything over there. Shrunken heads, bracelets, old ivory, young French women. Ah, oh, no, come, I'm talking about souvenirs. Those these. <laughs> I gotta get over there. I gotta get a boat. Take a trip and feeling held down again. Nah, only officers can sign out boat. I'll get a boat, all right. I'll latch onto some officer who's got some imagination. I would like to see that boy's tooth ceremonial as much as I would. It's a hell of a ceremonial. Dancing, drinking, everything. Why, do you think, Pony? We all know why you want to go to Valley High. Why? Because those French planters put all their young women there when they heard the GRs were coming. That's why. It ain't boar's teeth. It's day. It is war's teeth. And page. We got sunlight on the sand, we got moonlight on the sea. We got mangoes and bananas, you can pick right up a tree. We got volleyball and ping pong and a lot of dandy games. One thing we got, we ain't got days. Packages from home, we get movies, we get shows, we get speeches from our skipper and a flight from Tokyo Rolls, we get landers, dust, we point, we we get dizzy from the smell. What could we get? Get out of well. We got nothing to put on a clean white suit for. What we need is what there ain't no substitute for. There is nothing like a day. Oh. 
Have you done what you promised? Yes, Miss Forbush. <coughs> I did it all last night. Oh. oh, you don't have to open it here. Oh, Luther, you do beautiful work. You've even done the plates in my oh, show. Oh, please. Oh, please ain't hard. You better run along now and catch up your gang. Oh, the plates are very hard. How do you do such delicate work at night in the dark? There was a moon. There was a moon. A full moon. Oh. Not, not from you. Yeah. Guess I'm just about the luckiest nurse on the island until I found you. Well, bye, Luther. Uh. <laughs> Some of them noises. Well, the officers can have them. They got them. <laughs> well, they can have them. Rules and fools are deeming right. A completely free from flaw. I'm a sprinkle as a bird. I'm a sprite of Santa Claus. It's a waste of time to worry over things that they have not. Be thankful for the things they got. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, where? Princeton University. Oh, 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 oh. folks got money here, Lieutenant. Don't be ashamed of it. <laughs> Don't hide it. We understand. Say, Babs, you'd like to uh, hear the professor talk some language. What do you like to hear? Latin? Grecian? Ah, go on, give him some Latin. Um, Rictius Vives Licini. Ain't that sensational? Neque altum semper urgendo dum procellus. Now, Lieutenant, what did he say? I'm afraid I haven't the slightest idea. What's the matter? You didn't graduate? Ah, take the Lieutenant up to the buildings. They'll never make that. There she is, sir. You are causing an economic revolution on this island. These French ranchers can't find an agent to pick a coconut or milk a cow because you're paying them ten times as much to make these ridiculous grass skirts. French planters, stingy bastards! Sir, may I make a suggestion, sir? Who are you? Billis, sir, Wilfer Billis. I got your situation well in hand. The natives can now go back to work on the farms. The demand for grass skirts can now be met by us CVs. Dressmakers? You mean to tell me that the construction engineers of the United States Navy are now sitting around in sewing circles? If the idea doesn't appeal to you, sir, we can stop it. We can drop the whole idea right here, right now. Just say the word and pretend I never brought it. Phyllis? Yes, sir. Oh, nothing. Just making a mental note. I want to be sure enough to forget your name. I want to see you pick up every scrap of this paraphernalia now. And for the last time, carry it way down there beyond that fence. Off daily property. Cloudy major. <laughs> come on, everybody. Take all this stuff and throw it over that fence. Step to it. Come on. Okay, take it away down there. As far as you can go. Ah! Navy property, as far as you can go, way down there, up Navy property. You go too. All right, Miss Helen. Thank you. Lieutenant, who are you anyway? I'm Lieutenant Joseph Cable, sir. I just flew in on that Catalina. Joy right? No, sir, orders. A Marine under orders to me? Yes, sir. I'm Captain Brackett. How do you do, sir? This is Commander Harbison, my executive officer. How do you do? Well, what's it all about? Well, sir, my colonel feels that all these islands are in danger because we haven't been getting first-hand intelligence. And what we need is a coast watch. Coast watch? A man with a radio hiding out on one of these Jap-held islands so that he can start to watch the Jap ships when they start on the bottleneck. What do you think, Phil? Our pilots could do a hell of a lot with information against the Japs and that's it. You'd have to sneak this man ashore at night from a submarine. Yes, sir. who do it? Well, sir, I've been elected. You've got quite an assignment, son. Say, how long do you think you'd last out on the islands with information like that against the Jacks before they got to you? Well, I think I'd be okay if I could take a man with me who really knew the country. Headquarters have found out there's a French civilian here who used to have a plantation on Marie Louise Island. Marie Louise? Why, that's a great spot, sir, right on the bottleneck. What's this Frenchman's name? Emile de Bet. He came in my office in about half an hour, Cable. Yes, sir. Come on, Bill. Maybe you and I will get into this war yet.
Seems he left France in a hurry. Killed a guy. What do you think of that? It might be a handy man to have around. Keep him. Send Miss Forbush in. <coughs> Come in, Miss Forbush. Oh, Captain Bradley, please excuse the way I look. You look fine. <laughs> May I present Commander Harbison? Oh, I, I already know Miss Forbush, sir. We both served together on the GIS and Aimants Committee. I also present Lieutenant Joseph Cable, Miss Forbush. Sit down, Miss Forbush. How's the Thanksgiving entertainment coming along? Oh, very well, thank you, sir. We practice whenever we get the chance. About a week ago, you had lunch with a French planter, Emile de Beck. Yes, sir. What do you know about it? Well, uh, what do I know about it? That's right. Um, we met at the officer's club dance. He was there, and I met him. And then I had lunch with him that day. Yes, now what kind of a man is he? Oh, he's very nice. He's kind, he's attractive. I just don't know what you want to know, sir. What Captain Brucky wants to know, miss, is did you discuss mm. politics with him? No, sir. Well, you have discussed politics, Commander. Now, what we're specifically interested in is when these guys come out from France, it's generally because they've had some kind of trouble. Now, has he ever told you anything about that? No, sir. What do you know about his family? Oh, he has no family. No wife, nobody. He hasn't any children? No, sir. And you say he's never told you why he left France? Yes, sir. He left France because he killed a man. Did he tell you why? Nobody will if I ask him. Well, Miss Forbush, that's exactly what we want you to find out. Find out all you can about him, his opinions, his politics, why left France in such a hurry after killing this man. In other words, you want me to spy on him? Well, I'm afraid it is something like that. Do you suspect him of anything? No, it's just that we don't know very much about him, and uh, will you help us, Miss Forbush? I'll try. Thank you. You may go now, if you wish. I don't really know very much about him, do I? He's kept a few things from her, hasn't he? Well, you don't spring a couple of Polynesian kids on a woman right off the bat. I don't think we're going to get much out of her. She's obviously in love with him. I find that very difficult to believe, sir. I hear he's a middle-aged man. <laughs> hey, Bob. It's a common mistake for boys of your age and athletic ability trying to estimate men who have reached their maturity. But I didn't mean, sir. Young women frequently find a grown man attractive, strange as it may seem to you. I myself am over 50. I am a bachelor, and table, 
I do not, by any means, consider myself true. What's the matter, Bill? Nothing, sir. Nothing. Okay, Kate, we'll see your chow. Yes, sir. You play bridge? Yes, sir. Got any money? Yes, sir. I'll take it away from you. Thank you, sir. What makes you so damn sure this mission won't work? Sir, Marie Louise Island, 24 miles long, 3 miles wide. Say, for instance, they moved hills every time they send us a message. It seems to me, sir, that the last they can do is maybe a week before they get the job. Of course, it would be worth it if we were the right week. With decent information, our side might get moving. Operation Alligator might get off the hand. Here it is, sir. I got it. Okay, Bill. See you at Chow. See you at Chow, Bill. See you at Chow, sir. Okay, press right. I think so, sir. This is Amelia Fortuna, 325 Euclid Avenue, Shaker Heights, Cleveland, Ohio. That's right. I want to pack it myself. Very well, sir.
there's not going to be any trouble anymore because, well, I made up my mind about one thing. It's all over. Oh, go ahead. What happened? What did he do? Well, he didn't exactly do anything. It's just that, well, I don't really know very much about him. So before I go any further with this thing, I just better not get started. Don't you think so, too, Eliza? Mm. Yes, I do. You do? Uh-huh. Oh, well, I guess I do, too. Well, don't look so dramatic about it. It's like this. I can I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. Uh -huh. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. And send him on his way. Get the picture. I'm gonna wave that man right out of my arm. I'm gonna wave that man right out of my arm. I'm gonna wave that
that song? Is it a new American song? Ah, uh, it's an American type song. We were kind of putting it our own way. Where is everybody? It's strange in your American songs. One is either trying to get rid of one's lover, or one is trying to weep for a man one cannot have. That's right. I like a song which says, I love you, <coughs> and you love me. And isn't that fine? Yes. Isn't that fine? I left a letter for you at the hospital. It was to invite you to my home for dinner next Friday. Oh, well, I don't think I'll be able to come in, Neil. You see, I've made other plans. I've invited all my friends, the planters colony. A big party? Oh, well, then, if I can't come, you won't miss me. What well, it is for you, Nelly. It is for my friends to meet you. And most of all, for you to meet them. To give you some idea of what your life would be like here. I want you to know more about me. How I live and think. Know more about you? Yes, you know very little about me. That's right. Ah, uh, will you sit down? Do you think about politics much? And if so, what do you think about politics? Uh, do you mean my uh, political philosophy? I think that's what I mean. Well, to begin with, um, I believe in the free life, in freedom for everyone. Like in the Declaration of Independence? Say, sir, all men are created equal, isn't it? Angel, do you really believe that? Oh, well, thank goodness! That is why I'm here. Why I killed the man. Oh, yes, I meant to ask you about that, too. I don't want you to think I'm prying into your private life, asking you a lot of questions. It's just that I always think it's very interesting why a person kills another person. Of course, Nelly. That has bothered you. When I was a young boy, carried my heart in my hand. And when this man came to Azali, oh, my father said he was a good man. I knew he was bad, but I was young. Very soon, he had gathered all the cruel and wicked people to him. He was running out of town. He could take anything he wanted, do anything he wanted. I didn't like that. I was young. So I stood in the public square and I made a speech, and I called for everyone to stand with me against this man. And what did they do? They turned and walked away. But why? Because they saw him standing behind me. I turned. He said, I am going to kill you now. Before. I was never so strong. I threw him to the ground, and when he fell, his head struck a stone and... <laughs> I ran to the waterfall. I jumped on a cargo boat. I didn't even know what it was going until I stepped off that boat into another world where I am now and where I want to stay.
I understand all these things. Are you ready to give us your answer? Yes, I am. My answer must be no. When a man faces death, he must weigh values very carefully. He must weigh the sweetness of his life against what he's being asked to die for. The probability of death is great for both of us. I know that I went well, Lieutenant Cable, and I am not certain that I believe that what you are asking me to do is... We're asking you to help us lick the Japs. It's as simple as that. We're against the Japs. I know what you are against. But what are you for? When I was 22, I thought the world hated bullies as much as I did. But I was foolish. I killed one. And I was forced to flee to an island. Since then, I have asked no help from any man or any country. I have watched these bullies multiply and grow strong. And the world sat by and watched them. Oh, the hell with this, Quebec. Aren't you just a guy who's in love with a girl? You put her in Europe of everything else in the world. Yes, I do put my life with her before everything. This is the only thing that is important to me. This I believe in. This I am sure of. This I have. And I cannot risk to lose it. Good day, gentlemen. He's an honest man, but he's wrong. And of course, we can't guarantee him a better world if he win. The point is, we can guarantee him a worse one if he loses, can't we? Well, can't we? Of course. Cable, there's a bottle of scotch in my drawer. See you tomorrow. <laughs> this is the George. And how did you say? Yes, what is it? The old man just walked out of me with all these orders to be signed. The delegation of French planners, they're going on about some pig that the Seabees took and barbecued. This commander... All right, all right, put them down there, I'll see them later. Yes, sir. What should I do, Commander Harbison? Go back to my outfit tonight? No. Take a couple of days off. Unwind. Unwind? Yes. Take a boat. Go fishing. Boat.
this? You wait. But there's nobody around here. You wait, you tell her. What's going on, Mary? You like? <clears throat> Who is she? Leah. Leah. It's French name. Leah? But she no French girl. She talk a knees like me. We're the pretty people. No? You speak English? Only a few words. She speak French. Francais. Je parle Francais. Un peu. Moi aussi. Un peu. <laughs> Are you afraid of me? Um, avez-vous peur? No. Oui. No.
Oh, 
she'll have the generator out in a minute. We have a cut lights on, that's something. The way left the back just got started. Good. What I can't understand is how some guys ain't got the artistic imagination to put gas in the generator so as the show can be a success, especially when you're on the committee. You're on the committee too. Why didn't you tell us there's no gas in the generator? <laughs> Listen, I'm acting in the show. I'm stage manager and producer. I can't figure out everything, can I? Sure you can. He's got to put his two heads together. Listen, jerk, I got a production to run. How's the weight lifting act going? Can't tell. Ain't nobody clapping. <coughs> if there's nobody clapping, then it ain't going good. You ought to be able to figure that out. You was the one with the two heads. I know. <laughs> Could you tell me where I can find Miss Fogwood, please? Uh, she's on stage right now. She's the MC. She can't talk to nobody now. You want me to take those flowers to her? No, I prefer to give them to her myself. Hey, are you Mr. DeBeck? Yes. Do us a favor. Don't try to see her tonight. Why? Because we got her in a great mood tonight, and I don't want anything to upset her again. She has been upset? Upset? She's asked for a transfer to another island, and the day before yesterday, she busted out crying right in the middle of rehearsal. Said she couldn't go on with the show, and she wouldn't either until Captain Brackett talked to her, and told her how important it was to the men on the base. So do me a favor, don't try to see her tonight. She has asked for the transfer. Oh, tell her I told you, nobody's supposed to know. But I must see her tonight. Oh, well, wait in the area till after the show. I'll take the flowers to her. Hey, Phyllis! 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 Phyllis. Lieutenant Cable. Shh. Lieutenant Cable is supposed to be his own bed over at the hospital. You have been unwell. Me? I'm okay now. Fever gone. They can't keep me in that damn place any longer. I'm looking for a guy named Billis. A great guy for getting boats. And I need a boat right now. I've got to get over to my island. What? That damn island over there. The one with the two volcanoes on it. You ever been over there? Why, yes. I went over there every day till this damn malaria stopped me. Have you sailed over early in the morning with the warm rain playing across your face? Again, like last night. Mommy, I thought I was dreaming. No. What are you doing here? She's coming with my gun. Bigger than your wife, folks. Belong to Jacques Ferret. His wife, man, too. I'm very rich. You know him. Is that the old planner you told me about? The one who drinks? <laughs> my God, Mary. You can't let her marry a man like that. Okay. Then you marry her. Et toi, les malades. Tu Lieutenant, I'm worried about you. You have not been very well. Allow me to escort you back to the hospital. Oh, that's funny. You worried about me? The guy who lives on an island all by himself. Isn't afraid of anyone. Japs, Americans, Germans, anybody. Why pick out me to be worried about? Huh? Lieutenant, you like Liat. Marry Liat. You have good life here. Look, Lieutenant, I am rich. I saved $600 before war. War go on, I make $2,000. I make loads of money. Sell real grass skirts, gold teeth, real human heads. Give all the money to you and Liat. You don't have to work. I work for you. All day long, you and Liat be together. Walking woods, swimming sea, sing, dance. Nothing about Philadelphia is no good. We talk about beautiful things and make love all day long. You like? You buy? Thank you. 
is reversed. Now it may take a long time before we can get any big operation on the way. So it's things like this, like this show tonight, that keep us going. Now I understand I'm not generally considered a sentimental type. Yeah. <laughs> Once or twice, I understand I've been referred to as old iron belly. Just once or twice. I resent that very much. Because I had already chosen that as my private name for our executive officer, Commander Harbison. Take a bow, Commander. <clears throat> now I want you to know that both old iron bellies sat here tonight and had a hell of a good time. What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and we want to thank that hard-working committee of nurses and CBs who made the costumes out of rope mosquito nets, newspapers and comic books, and thought up these jokes and these grand songs. And I just want to say on this Thanksgiving Day to all of them, from all of us, thank you. And now I'm going to ask Commander Harbison to announce the next act, which is the finale of our Thanksgiving entertainment. Thank you, Officer. Thank you. Be quiet, Marie. The next and last will be a song sung by Bolson Butch Forbush with the siren of the coral sea, the gorgeous, voluptuous Mademoiselle Listeria Bellis. <laughs> 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 Oh, 
Just sing out. What's the matter, Nellie, the nurse? Having diplomatic difficulties with friends? John! John Cable! Well, let you out of the hospital. Me? I'm okay. Oh, Joe, you're trying to get over to Valley High, that little girl you told me about? Leah, I've just seen her for the last time, I guess. Oh, Joe. Nellie, I love her. And yet I just heard myself saying I couldn't marry her. What's wrong with me? What sort of a guy am I anyway? Oh, you're all right. You're just far away from home. Really? So far away. I will see you. Hey, Neil, I, I just... Will you excuse us, Lieutenant Taylor? No, wait a minute, Joe. Stay, please. Hey, Neil, I've been meaning to call you, but I... I you asked for the transfer, Nelly. Why? What does it mean? I'll explain it to you tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. Now, Nelly, what does it mean? It means I can't marry you. Do you understand? I can't marry you. Is it because of my children? No, it's not because of your children. They're sweet. Is it their Polynesian mother, then? Their mother and I? Yes. I can't help it. It isn't as if I could give you a good reason. There is no reason. This is emotional. It's something that's born in me. It is not. I do not believe it is born in you. Then why do I feel the way I do? All I know is I can't help it. I can't help it. Explain how we feel, please, Joe. Nelly! Time, are you ready? Come on. What makes her talk like that? Why do you have these feelings, you and she? I do not believe it is born in you. I do not believe it. It's not born in you. It has to after you all. You've got to be taught to hate and fear. You've got to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drunk in your dear little air. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people whose eyes are wide.
Now this is built. So this is Lieutenant Butcher Adams who flew the mission this morning. Adams? Captain. One man like you in an outfit is like a rotten apple in a barrel. Just what did you feel like sitting down there in that little rubber boat in the middle of Empress Augusta Bay with the whole damn Navy Air Force trying to rescue you? And how the hell did you fall out of a Catalina anyway? Well, sir, the Japan aircraft just busted a hole in the side of the plane and I fell through. The wind just sucked me out. So I'm to understand that you hid in the baggage of a plane you knew was taking off on a very dangerous mission. You had nerve enough to do that, all right. And in the moment an anti-aircraft gun hit the plane, you fell out. The wind just sucked you out. You and your little parachute. I don't think you fell out, Phyllis. I think you jumped out. Which did you do? Well, sir, it was sort of half and half, if you get the picture. This is one of the most humiliating things that ever happened to me. Adams, when did you discover he was on the plane? Well, sir, we'd been out about an hour. It was still dark, I know. Well, we were flying across the Maria Louise. The Japan aircraft spotted us when we made that hit. Well, that's when Luther, uh, this fella here, that's when he left the ship. Well, I circled once, just enough time to drop him a rubber boat. Some New Zealanders spotted him in their feet forties settled up above him while I flew across the island and landed close to that southern. Let Joe and the Frenchman off. Well, by the time I got back to the other side of the island, our Navy planes were up in the air, flying around this guy like a thick swarm of bees, sir. Well, anyhow, they kept the Jap guns occupied while I slipped down and scooped them up that rubber boat. You'd have thought this guy was a 90 million dollar cruiser they'd have to protect, sir. There must have been 55 or 60 planes. 62. Not far off, Adams. Harbison tells me this thing this morning cost the Navy almost $600,000. 600000 What the hell are you so happy about? I was thinking about my uncle, sir. Do you remember my uncle I was telling you about? He used to tell my old man that I'd never be worth the time. Him and his lousy slot machines. Can Why you... the hell did you do this, Phyllis? What would make a man do a thing like this? Well, sir, a fella's got to keep moving. You know, you get kind of held in. If you're itching to take a trip to pick up a few souvenirs, you got to kind of pour it in if you get the picture. How did you know about it? Well, I didn't know about it exactly, sir. It was when I heard Lieutenant Cable talking to that fella, Dubeck. Right away, I know something was in the air. That's what I like, Captain. Projects. Don't you? Phyllis, you've broken every goddamn regulation in the book, and Captain Bracken and I are going to throw it at you. Sir, I barge in there. You see, my co-pilot saw the whole thing, you know, and he reckons that all those planes up in the air and Phyllis down there in that rubber boat kind of cause a diversionary reaction, sir. See, while the planes were shooting at those, Jack was shooting at those planes, and Phyllis down there in a boat, well, that stuff was on the other side of the island, slipping in that cove and depositing Joe and the Frenchman off in behind those rocks, sir. What the hell do you want me to do? Pin a medal on him? Oh, I don't want no medal, Captain. <laughs> but I could use a little freedom, a little room to swing around in. If you get the picture, if you know what I mean. Get out of here. Get out of here! Get the hell Let's out go. of here! <clears throat> Well, I am Belly. What would you have done? I'd have thrown him in the brick, sir. And by God, if I get the ghost of a chance, I will. And so we are here. This is our first chance to send news to you. We have made contact with former friends of mine. We have set up quarters in a mango tree. No room, but a lovely view. First, the weather. Rain clouds over Bougainville, the treasuries, Shale and New Georgia. We expect rain in this region from 9 o'clock till 2 o'clock. Pardon, oh my friend Joe corrects me. 0900 to 1400. And now our military expert, Joe. All you Navy, Marine and Army pilots, write this down. Surface craft, 19 troop barges heading down the bottleneck. Speed about 11 knots. Order past Panica at about 2000 tonight, escorted by heavy warships. There ought to be somewhere to knock off a few of these. 
As for aircraft, there is little indication of activity at the moment. Boy. But 22 hey, bombers, fed his headed southwest. There is fighter escort, Weeps. not heavy. They should reach. Sit down, Bill. You know what I like, Bill? Projects. Don't you? Yes, sir. Very carefully. Ceiling today unlimited. 33 fighters, zeros, have moved in from Bougainville. Their course is approximately 23 degrees. We believe heavy bombers will fall. Got that? Well, gentlemen, here's the hot tip for the day. Join the Frenchman is funny 20th service day in southeast from Bella La Bella. Christmas is just two weeks away. So why don't we give the characters a good present? A lovely view of the South Pacific with no ships coming back. What do you say? That's okay with me. Let's go. go. So you've got to tell us something sometime. It's been two weeks now. You may as well tell it now. Okay. Send her in. Send her in. I always get the tough jobs to do. Hello, Mr. Corbett. Could you come into the office? Thank you. Captain Bracken, sir? I know this isn't regular. It's about Emil Beck. I went to his house a week ago to... Oh, well, you know how people have arguments and then days later you think of a good answer? Well, I went to his house and he wasn't there. I even asked the children. He had two little children. And they didn't seem to know where he'd gone. At least I think that's what they said. They only speak French. And then tonight when I was on duty on the ward, we got a lot of fire pilots over there, you know, the ones who knocked out that convoy yesterday. Well, you know how fire pilots talk about immelmans and wing overs and things. And I don't usually listen, but they kept talking about a Frenchman. The Frenchman said this and the Frenchman said that. And I was wondering, sir, if this Frenchman they were talking about could be my Frenchman. Yes, Miss Forbush, it is. I couldn't tell you before, but as a matter of fact, if you wait a few minutes, you can hear his voice. His voice? But where is he? He's with Lieutenant Cable behind the enemy lines. Behind enemy lines? Hello. Hello, my friends and allies. My message today must be brief and sad. Lieutenant Cable, my friend Joe, died last night. He died from wounds he received three days ago. I will never know a finer man. I wish he could have told you the good news. The Japanese are pulling out and there is great confusion. Our guess is that the Japs will try to evacuate troops from Cape Esperance tonight. You may not hear from us for several days. We must move again. The planes are overhead. They are looking for us again. We believe that what? What? Goodbye! Shut up! Shut up! Can you get the back? No, sir, they didn't cut off.
I know what counts now. You, all those other things, the one you had before, her color, what pimple, what a pinhead I was. Oh, come back so I can tell you. God, don't die until I can tell you. All that matters now is you and I being together. Just together. The way we wanted it to be the first night we met. Think only of that night. And live, baby. Live. When you find your true love. Jacks, if you get the picture. 
Very fine of you, Billis, but you're too late for diversion activity. I started this morning before the sun came up. Operation Alligator got on the way. And it's relayed on 14 Japanese held islands. Well, that's very unfair, sir. The first thing they should have done was to try and rescue that Frenchman. The Admiral agrees with you, Billis. Marie Louise Island was the first to hit this point. Did they get it? Is he alive? We don't know. Lieutenant Buzz Adams go up there to find out. He's not come back. If the Frenchman's dead, it is unfair. Too damn bad if part of this huge operation. Couldn't have saved at least one of the guys who made it at all possible. Sir, it's not going to be They're going in all directions. Which is very simple matter. The whole picture of the South Pacific is changing. We're going the other way, sir. Captain Rackett, sir. The board's ready to take you to your ship. You got a ship, sir? Yes, Arbison and I have got a ship. I'm no longer a lousy island commander. Come on, Bill. So long, Captain Brackett. So long, Phyllis. By the way, I never did get you in the brig, did I? No! <laughs> oh, I forgot. Forgot what, sir? Your unit will be on our ship. I'll be seeing all of you. Get the picture? <laughs> All right, let's start getting these trucks moving out. Nurses, go with the side play. Marine Joe, go with the LCT. And CBs, you will go with Carrier 6. Has anyone got any questions? Let's move out. <laughs> Yeah. 